Yeah, all we've done really is taken out the springing stones. It was there was nothing there. The the old arch, someone had come along previously and pinned it in, and we've now taken the inner arch out and the outer. Hood so mold. The, these are all vus. Well, yeah, hood molds. Um, taken them out and put them back in. The springing stones. I'll just have to interject there. The springing stones are the stones at the base that you can see. With a kind of round, rounded section on that the arches kind of the timber arches sat on and the, mm -hmm. and the yeah, new arches. Yeah, there would have been a lot of detail underneath, wouldn't there? They're really sort of capital heads, aren't they? And then we would have had columns up here, which I think you'd be able to notice on the other arches. And it's all kind of pretty eroded, as you can see. Yeah. Just the yeah, which has made it quite hard to build because there's no no reference point of <laughs> of really where you normally you could take a line off a wall and and see where you might be or use bits of detail on here but but yeah this has been the main that was the worst one the main work really mm. and we've put stainless steel bar in 24 mil stainless steel bar into the into the bottoms as well just to give it more support mm. so these two say so th this acts as a springer to take the weight going this way of the arch but now these two are also doing the same job so we've on on both sides so it's go anywhere and obviously the wooden former that's been knocked up by one of the carpenters from HPR which is just the inside radius less a bit just so we can get wedges in and then we take the wedges out in, in a couple of days time or maybe leave it over the weekend now we're in this part of the week and um, take the former out and there it will stay and we can come and look from below in future months. <laughs> yeah, and hopefully the line <laughs> goes like Appreciate that. Appreciate your work. <laughs> no problem, is there anything else anyone yeah. wants to know? Do you do autographs? Yeah. <laughs> Here's one for you Dave, I'll ask you one, being a stonemason oh. to a stonemason. <laughs> Have you put your banker mark on any of these stones? Well no, because they're not my stones, are oh, they? Oh, there so. you go, now there's an answer for some reason. I study stained glass and uh, as an apprentice, uh, going into a stained glass workshop, you, you'd do a couple of years doing borders, then move up to letters and background and finally it's the robes and finally it's the face. That's that's the master. Do you have the similar sort of thing in so masonry? Do you um, have apprentices just knocking out really simple stuff for years and years and years and advancing to the more complex type projects? Yeah, normally, well you obviously go to college first for a, a fixer, which is someone who puts these stones in, or you go as a banker who's someone who makes the shapes of the stones. You're going on a good apprenticeship, you'll be trained to do both. Yes. Normally, I came from the Canterbury Cathedral and you spend a winter working stones because it's too cold to work with the lime outside. Yeah. And then in in the summer, you come to fix those stones that you've made. So you've got you get both. both sides of it. But and then the setting out, the measuring, I think that comes with it's not that that doesn't start off as someone's apprenticeship. It's you know you'll get to take bits of dimensions and things, but I think that's probably More the most skilled part of the job. I'd say all the pressure is at the beginning stage, which is the setting up. Because if you've got that wrong by a bit, exactly the whole thing, and then everyone goes and makes it, then. But just taking it back a step further, uh, if, you have it, if you're interested in this kind of thing, which I know you all are, there's a great book by Ken Follett, Pillars of the Earth, you'll see it's yeah. been dramatised on yeah. television. Yeah. It's a great book, somebody put me onto it about 25 years ago when I'd been to America and then you were a stonemason and came back, it's another story, but is what Dave's just saying and what the ladies just asked is, when you started as a stonemason on somewhere like this, you would make six-sided pieces of stone forever and a day until you were that good. Now people think that making something six hard is pretty easy, well it isn't. No. Mm. We bone them in to make sure everything's 90 degrees. You know what I mean? One person's interpretation of, oh that's square, <laughs> it'll be Dave's interpretation of, well it won't fix because the joints aren't right. square and therefore the joints shouldn't be, we want two mil joints, that one's going to be four mil because you've not got a 90 degree angle, do you see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So you would advance up and once you'd done that for a few years, if you've seen that you had the eye or the capability or the skill, you would then go into the carved stuff because that's where the variation yeah. is, isn't it? But what I'm saying is in their day, it was trial and error, and if you yeah. read the book, you'll realise yeah. that yeah. Wallerin goes yeah. on his travels and he comes back and he sees a thing called a flying buttress, yeah. which makes you go higher yeah. and wider, because you're putting some 
force against something that wants to spread. Mm. And you know, like I say, in the good old days, it was trial and error. <laughs> Unfortunately, I've missed the HSC who says, No, I'm sorry. They also used to set, did they shut down for the winter oh, in yeah. those days. I mean, you've worked through the winter here, oh, haven't yeah, you? We have, yeah. So, what things can't you do in the winter? Well, it's just like Dave said, it's lime, it's certain temperatures. Right. I mean, you can, you can work all year long, it's just you've got you to can. be conscious of it. And obviously, the further north we come in our country, you know, down maybe further south, you know, the temperatures aren't as cold over yeah. the winter, but just the usual protection. We've had to protect the work at high level, hesse and sheeting, mm. you know. And then, but similarly, when you, when the sun does come up, uncover and let the air uh, make sure the, yeah. the lime cures. Mm. I served. I spent all the time at Ripon Cathedral. So I'm right. from Ripon. I spent there for ten years, and you know, it's no different there than what it was years ago. You know, you get to label stops or hood molds, and you get the label stop at the end. And they'll just carve a local character or a local, wow. you know, whoever it is. It may be a benefactor. You know, in the good old days, it would have been Friar Tuck, won't it? Yeah. Because he was the local whatever. And then when I worked at, like I said, I worked at Ritten Cathedral, the chap who was there, who I served my time for, in the 70s, he tried to carve all the League United football. <laughs> football <laughs> and it was apparently, somebody kept the cut in. It was on Billy the front Brenner of the, and Norman. Yeah, and it love. was on the front of the sun. Yeah. And he didn't get away with it. And do you know what he did instead? He carved no. all the lads who worked in the Mason's yard. And oh, they're still there now. Brilliant. And one of them had glasses like I have, unfortunately, these days. He put the, a gla- pair, you know, he carved the glasses on and even put the little, you know, kind of whatever plastic lenses in. So, like I say, you know, them things are still traditional. Mm. You would still yeah. carve somebody, you know, if there was a. You know, benefactor to to Abbey now. You know that, that, that's what we'd be asked to do, and that's what we'd do. Dave's a dab hand with his carving. He's, he's done some bit of carving while he's been here. But <laughs> well, that's another story. So yeah, it's just it's nice for us as a stonemasonry company to, to have this kind of work to do. Because if we don't, if people like Dorian and yourselves don't want it replacing, then our our trade's dead. There's only about three colleges in all the country, and you'll find this for stone. You know, with stained glass. You know, if people don't hand them traditions down, them traditions are lost. Yeah. And they're lost forever, do you know what I mean? Because they'll, they'll die with people. So I'm not being doom and gloom, it's, it's great, <laughs> you know what I mean? And it's beautiful and lovely day to see the, you know, the work that Dave and Darren and the team have done, Joe, Martin, who's down in the infirmary. It's great for us. It's great that you appreciate it as well. Mm.